Is this the one? Let's go. G'day guys, welcome to the next episode of the Two Red Chairs podcast. Today I'm here at the Champagne Bar on level three of the Sofitel Sydney Darling Harbour. The man I have next to me here is, look, someone that is a prolific designer. He's heralded around the world for his work. He is an author, he is an educator, he is an agency owner of his own studio, both here in Australia and overseas from his base in Chicago. Um, it's Rob Janoff. G'day. Um, if you don't know who Rob is though, you might not be familiar with his name, let's say, but you'll definitely know his work and uh, look, if you, if you don't know his work, you've definitely been living under a big ass rock um, and the work that Rob is uh, very much well famous for is the Apple logo of all things. So welcome Rob, sir. How are you doing today? Thank Thanks. you so much for the opportunity. I want to start and, and get this out of the way just as quick as sort of possible um, because everyone's going to be thinking of this. Was it always going to be an Apple symbol for the Apple logo? In no, your mind? actually. Um, the people I was working for at the agency it was Regis McKenna Advertising in Palo Alto. Um, when Steve came to the office and said, I need a logo for my new computer, it was an Apple II. And, uh, and my boss at, at the time said, you know, don't do a bug, don't do an icon, just do the name and a nice face. And I said, Regis, you gotta, with a name like Apple, you gotta have an, you gotta have an Apple in there someplace. And, uh, and so I did it. Uh, and, and Steve Jobs said, whatever you do, don't make it cute. So, uh, I later learned that cute meant don't make it look like computer type. So, so uh, designed it, and it was an, another thing. I only did one design for him. He didn't give him an option. It was, I've never, I never have done that before or since. However, I was so clear about what this thing should be, I didn't want him to do anything else. So, this is it, Steve. Fortunately, he said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is history. I want to ask as well, I've had a little look about this on the internet, and there's a kind of a myth going around about the Apple symbol that you've designed. And the myth was that it was created using the golden ratio, which a lot of designers froth over, which is kind of get very excited about the golden ratio and how it applies to many logos, whether or not it was designed or not. So to put that myth to bed, did you design it with the golden ratio in mind, or was it flat out no? I'm sorry, designers, I did not use the golden ratio. Uh, and, uh, but I was, I was really surprised and impressed that people thought that because everything I did at the time was just intuitive. There was no, no formula for it. And uh, so I'm glad that it's associated with something famous like that, but that was not the case. Put to bed, busted, <laughs> as the myth bosses would say, busted. Okay. Um, now, to rewind a little bit further back in, in your life, probably before the Apple logo, so you originally were doing industrial design at, at, at your university that you were studying, and you chose graphic design. Um, for you, when you graduated, because a lot of the, the people that would be watching this here in Australia especially are design graduates or soon-to-be graduates, what was your first big break into the design industry and what did that do then for your career? Well, I never was a practicing industrial designer. I went to uh, San Jose State University and at the time in California um, it enabled me to go to school as, an in, uh, as a resident and, and so it was cheaper and to please my dad I went to a place where I could get a degree and in art, because he didn't want to be supporting me as a as an art starving artist, <laughs> so uh, so I did that and, and quickly realized that it really wasn't for me. It wasn't very fun. Uh, where they were really having fun was across the quad at the art department. So that was my <laughs> introduction to to graphics. Really, uh, I was in the graphic design department of of, a, of the art department, and and had a, a wonderful time because I realized at, the, at that time uh, words and pictures together were really what I 
liked about design, design work. So uh, I guess that the breakthrough was figuring out what it is I really liked doing and then following that. Mm. So as a result of, of choosing the path of graphic design, were there any sort of attitudes that you could look back on that have stayed with you over the test of time to where you are now being a, you know, a fastidious, fastidious person of detail in your work or anything like that that's proven beneficial in your career, let's say? Well, I think maybe the thing that stands out most is just the idea of keeping it simple. Because especially in branding and logos, there's a tendency with owners or entrepreneurs to, to want to say everything, everything. And unfortunately, it gets so busy you can see nothing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the whole idea of branding and logos is really quick, really remember. So, so I, I, I always say, well, simpler is better. And for you, in terms of your process um, of, let's say, coming up with an iconic logo or any logo that you do come up with now, let's say, is there a golden nugget in that process that, that has just rung true at that same time? Like, is it, is it sketching or, or something like that that you do as your process that's your go-to thing that just nails it for you? Well, for me, it is sketching. And that be that's because... <laughs> That's all we did before. We didn't have a computer to design on. And, uh, I'm a horrible sketcher, by the way. I'm terrible at it. Well, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's just about the idea. Exactly. And, uh, and the computer can make it all pretty. But if, it, if it's not an, there's not an idea there, it's really not worth it. Um, and so I, I uh, always tell people to get the idea and do it by hand and, and then go into making it, it perfect on the computer. Um, because a lot of a lot of guys uh, who are in just getting into the business rely so heavily on the computer that you get lost, you get lost in the curves and the this and the that, and you you forget the bigger picture. I'm totally guilty of that. Let's put it that <laughs> way, where I'm going like straight hell bent into Illustrator and then going nothing's working, and I've gone. You know what? Let's just take a step back and right. and jot it down and right. see what happens. Right. And it it oh it. Weirdly, but <laughs> I wouldn't say weirdly because it's just true. It always turns out for the better, uh -huh. having just organically go about it. And that's great to hear from your perspective that it works just the same. And I think it does for many designers out there as well, which is fantastic. Um, the next question I kind of have is a bit of a long tail lead into it, but so bear with me on it. But if you looked at, uh, if we look at your logo, the Apple logo that you've designed, and, and add that to the Nike logo swoosh, the McDonald's um, golden arches, and you would most people would call them like the goats of logo design, so the greatest of all time type of logos. And I hope that you know is a nice thing to hear Thank from you. somebody. <laughs> um, so you would akin that to like the Michael Jordans of NBA or the. Um, Babe Ruth's of baseball, or here in Australia, if you're familiar at all with cricket, the Don Bradman's of cricket. Um, so where I'm going with that is that do you think a logo is great or deemed great and have that kind of um, st stigma, but just you know amplified interest in it due to the fact that the company that it represents has great success? Or is a logo great because um, it's in the eye of the beholder? And you know, it's each. We're all each to their own. What do you think about that? Well, for sure, the success of Apple had mostly to do with Steve, Steve Jobs, and uh, I was very fortunate to be at the right place in the right time to meet Steve, because at the beginning, Apple was three people, and uh, but for me, it was it was great because there weren't a lot of layers, there wasn't a lot of a lot of falderall, and so I had an idea. This is. I, I want them to do it like this. Steve, I want you to do it like this. Yeah, yeah. And he said, okay. And, and uh, I think he trusted me because unlike a lot of you know, people in advertising, I wasn't a suit. I was kind of long hair and hippie, <laughs> just like him. And so he felt comfortable with that. And uh, that's sort of oh, <laughs> accepted yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, this is something, again, I am so guilty of. Are you the kind of designer that would walk down the street, let's say, and see a whole bunch of logos, because we're always surrounded by logos now, and think, you know what, I could probably do something better for them? Or are you the designer that looks at a logo more objectively and sees 
it for what it is and the best parts that it is and accepts you know anyone's work for for what it is right. i Love looking, looking at logos, obviously. And I'll be walking down the street and just noticing a lot, a lot of uh, different logos and what's going on. Um, and I, I also know how difficult it is after I've been working for a while to know that you have an idea, but the client has an idea. And so there's a give and take and a back and forth. And a lot of times it isn't what the designer really wanted to do. And in a lot, a lot of times, it breaks their heart. <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I understand that, and I appreciate that. And so I'm not very critical, because mm -hmm. I know what it took to get there. Yeah. And it's important to, to get there. Yeah. It's important to have them pay you. Yeah. That's primo importance. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, and I also really hesitate to be critical of other designers' work, sure. because these days, everybody sees everything and everyone has an opinion, and it's public. So, yeah, which yeah. kind of leads me to the next question on that same point is, we're all so quick to pass judgment now because we have the keyboards and the phones to, to be able to right. do so, right. which is, you know, with great power comes great responsibility, kind uh -huh. of that Spider-Man, <laughs> Uncle Ben line. Um, but how do we get, past, how do you think we get past that urge, that fiery urge to go, this new logo's come out and I'm going to pan it. Like, I don't like it, I don't understand it yet, it's not sitting well with me. How do you think you get past that? Do you, is it looking objectively at a logo or, you know, as a, especially as a young designer, let's say, how would you get past that stupid urge that you have inside? To be, to be critical? To not be critical. Oh, to not be critical. Yeah, yeah, because everyone is generally negatively critical of something mm -hmm. and to maybe remove yourself a little bit to not go in guns blazing and mm -hmm. I've noticed that myself yeah. is how critical designers can be of other designers work and you know and like I said I know what it takes to get there so I, I, I tend to pull back on that stuff and I don't think anyone is so great to be able to pass judgment like that so um, so I it's, it's it's not a difficult urge to, to hold back but it's something I think Got to be humble, yeah. and uh, and accept, you know, for what it is and for what they had to do to get it there. Yeah. So so yeah. And then for you, and I asked this to you before we started this conversation was, um, and I think it was Marty Newmeyer, and I don't know if you're well versed in Marty Newmeyer. He says that a brand is that gut feeling somebody has about a brand. For someone that's created the Apple logo. What's that feeling for you when you see that brand now? When I, when I see the When logo. you see Apple or the logo and everything that kind of comes with it. <laughs> and it's a, that's a big question, I know, but for you, what, it, what, what is that like to see that every day, nearly? It's a thrill. Yeah. I never get tired of it. I'm a dad. Mm -hmm. I feel like these are my kids. Yeah. And so I'm very proud of them. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm even very proud when they change colors. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> Because it's, it's, it's the shape, it's, it's, it's the personality of, of a piece, of a logo. And in the beginning, when I was designed the, the striped, rainbow striped apple, um, it gave it a life, it gave it a personality. Yeah. And that's the thing I try to do all the time, is, is, is make it come alive with a personality and make somebody want to have it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I almost want to, you know, hold yeah. it like a teddy bear. Yeah. So, so... Um, it's a very important, I think, a really important element to, for success of a yeah. logo design is, is the personality. Love it. Which I think follows on to, for yourself, as a designer, what is that legacy for you to lead behind um, something maybe that is as prolific as the Apple logo or just your um, ambitions as a designer to start your own studio? What, what does that look like for Rob Janoff? Well, um, I feel very fortunate. Uh, I don't know how many designers get the chance to be able to see their work all over the place in all these different languages. And I mean, it's, it's a thrill. Um, besides just sort of seeing it yeah. out of place. And if I'm in a different country, in China, I see a big billboard and I can't make out a thing. <laughs> but there's the logo. And 
And so somebody's reacting to it just like I reacted when I came up with it in my head. So that's a real, it's great to be able to internationally share an emotion like that, you know? I can only imagine. I mean, just even my own child, he's two years old, and he, can, he picks up my iPhone and my iPad and just knows what to do with it. And that's not because it's the logo I know, but to, to recognize something that it is what it is and just... I can't imagine what that feeling would be like for you and I think it's a, an amazing thing to when and if you do finish your career um, to, to walk away and go you know what I've, I've done good here uh, well, I have a grandson now we have a grandson and uh, it's it's a thrill for me he doesn't get quite get it yet he's <laughs> 10 um, but it's it's a legacy thing yep. and it's something that he can always know and have mm -hmm. it's it's an abstract thing that he can say my grandpa did that yeah. you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so so uh it, it's that that is a great feeling i love it i love it now i want to fire some quick fire questions before we finish up here sure. the first one is uh mac or pc oh absolutely mac i was having to teach a class they put me in a classroom with pcs <laughs> I'd never used one. I had to ask one of the kids, how do you turn it on? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the next part of that would be, do you use an iPhone? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who doesn't? I mean, if it's not an iPhone, okay. Yeah, but who, yeah. but uh, it's become so much a part of our lives. Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. And then when I think about how things were, you know, when we started and, and, and the things that Steve made, the way th Steve changed the l everyday life, mm -hmm in so many areas, in music, in, um, in communication. In health, nearly now. In health, yeah, yeah. Uh, amazing, yeah. Just, just amazing. And to, to have gone through that and to be part of that history, it feels great. <laughs> Designing, drawing tablet, mouse, or pen and paper? And pen and paper, pen and pencil. Pencil. I'm always yeah, yeah, yeah. so um, so yeah that's it for me um, it's quicker for me it's a easier con do it with my brains mm -hmm. I don't I'm not a real technical person when you think about it, you were talking about your your son yeah. being able to just pick it up like that well I think that's a generational kind of thing and I don't exactly know how it slips in mm -hmm. but when you're when you have to learn it as an adult it's a lot more difficult than just sort of coming right to it. Yeah, and that's the thing with my son. Like, he knows that an iPhone is a phone. He, he hasn't seen the proper, you know, old telephone, rotary right. telephone or anything like that. So how did he know, and he sees that symbol and still knows it's a telephone. Right. And it's like, well, how, how? Right. Crazy. And that's bizarre for a kid to, to know that phone means a little square thing mm -hmm. instead of a thing with a handle <laughs> and a rotary dial or buttons. So, yeah. Favorite logo you've designed? Favorite logo I've designed? No question. Apple, it's gotten me all over the Just world. Just in case, we thought we'd ask anyway. Sure, sure. <laughs> and if, quite frankly, I had no idea, well, I had no idea when it started that it would ever be this, this popular. In fact, when, when I got the account, Palo Alto has a very strong, where I was working at the time, mm. design community. And we ch ch chat, and you're working with photographers and designers all the time. And they were telling me, forget it, Rob. They're going out of business. They're going to get bought really quickly. So don't get too attached. Don't buy anything. <laughs> so, so anyway, so yeah, that, that didn't, didn't come to pass. I'm glad. Favorite logo someone else has designed? Well, you might think it's strange, but I really, have really always loved the FedEx logo, yep. mostly because it's so interactive. And a lot of people don't get it, don't see it right off the bat. And so I love to, to, to make people aware of the little yeah. arrow that tells you what's, what's happening with the this company. Gym. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, when there's that kind of interest, when there's that kind of special thing, yeah. um, I, I think that's, 
spectacular and as a designer it's like oh it's like the aha, aha. moment exactly oh, yeah. exactly and it, which is interesting you said that because i was teasing people on instagram before i came to meet you of who i would be meeting and it was either the apple logo designer or the fedex logo designer <laughs> there, and you, there go. you go <laughs> um and finally rob to ask you this or to give to the audience listening here to a budding logo designer what would be your solid bit of advice for that person that's starting out I would say if you really like doing this work um, and are passionate about it, you'll be successful because you just need to keep doing it and doing it. And, and the more you do it and the more you practice, the better you get at it. And you never can tell when that opportunity is going to happen. I mean, this, this client, Steve Jobs, and the company, this new company, Apple, was just a thing, an assignment. I did one week. It was a couple of weeks of work. And that was that. Um, and who would have thought that it would turn into the, a major part of my career <laughs> and get me all over the world yeah. and seeing people and meeting great people. So um, I would just say to go for it. And even if you don't think you can do it, jump in and give it a shot because you just, you just never know what will surround that. I mean, my first couple, my first year, on the job after school, I, I learned so much, so much in the first six months that equaled six years or four years or whatever. I'm with you on that boat. I was exactly the same. That first six months of work experience, right. it, it equated to more than four years. And the, a thing that goes along with that is is uh, knowing people who you admire, who do this work, who you have a rapport with. When something comes across the thing, I don't know how to do this. Exactly. What do you do? Yeah. And then you do it, and then you, you've done that, and you've put another little feather in your cap. Mm -hmm. so, so, and I tend to be kind of a shy person, and, um, and that was one thing I learned. If, if I didn't like, take that, it was always like a risk. Like, oh, what do you mean, work in New York? Oh my God. Yeah. Um, but you gulp, and you give it a shot. Because what's the worst that could happen? Exactly. So, so yeah, that's it. Thank you so much, sir. Um, it's been my pleasure. Thanks for letting me come along here to the Sofitel to meet you today. Um, this opportunity has just blown my mind, let's say. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> so for me as a designer, this is just, you know, I'll, I'll be fine if, <laughs> if it ended all tomorrow, let's just say that. Um, oh, so, <laughs> that's probably a, a bit of a stretch, I know. But um, guys, if you've been listening to this podcast um, or listening, sorry, or watching this on YouTube or even IGTV, um, thank you for watching and listening. And to Rob, thank you very much, sir. My pleasure. Cheers. Thanks. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye.